We have to talk. I really don't. Well, this isn't just about you. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most controversial teen drama episodes ever. I'd like to clear up this misunderstanding. I understand you perfectly well, Miss Jacobs. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable times adolescent-centered shows scandalized, shocked, or upset people, sparking conversations. Since plot points will be discussed, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Do you remember watching any of these? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. The Lonely Hearts Club – The O.C. Marissa Cooper and Ryan Atwood were the main dramatic coupling on The O.C., but you might remember Marissa's relationship with a different blonde in Season 2. Not that I want to put any pressure on you or anything. It's just that's how I feel. And I had to say it. Alex Kelly started out as a possible romantic interest for Seth Cohen, but when she and Marissa started hanging out, it was impossible to miss the sparks between them. The two share a pivotal first kiss in an episode called The Lonely Hearts Club. It was a big moment, but it wasn't all sunshine and roses behind the scenes. Show creator Josh Schwartz has spoken about the network being nervous about the reaction to the Marissa Alex storyline. He even had to resort to bartering for kisses. The pair's relationship was unfortunately short-lived, ending mere episodes later. I really wanted this to work between us. Number 9. Loser Like Me – Glee Gleeks everywhere swooned for Kurt and Blaine from the moment they met in the second season. Sadly, we learn in the season 6 premiere that they've called it quits, breaking off their engagement. What? Yeah, it got pretty rough after everyone left and it was just him and me alone in the loft. I guess we're too young. But Kurt wants to work things out. Except, much to his surprise, Blaine is dating someone new. An even bigger surprise is that the person is Dave Karofsky, the same Karofsky who made Kurt's life miserable before coming out as gay. I knew this would be a little weird for you. It's a living nightmare. What? No, it's, it's not weird at all. No, uh, so how'd you two meet up again? Well, um, it was actually just a few months ago, right here, as a matter of fact. While he had changed since those days, some felt it was odd that Blaine would get romantically involved with him given the history. Needless to say, this was a couple many felt no reason to root for at all. I know this isn't what you wanted. And I know this isn't going to be easy, but I just wanted all of us to be able to be adults about this. Number 8. They Shoot Humphreys, Don't They? Gossip Girl Gossip Girl was known for being racy, and they used that to their advantage when teasing this Season 3 episode. Thanks for saving me. If you two want to kiss. The promo made it obvious that some characters would be trying out a threesome for the first time. And while that was true, we kind of think it overpromised. In the episode itself, Olivia, Dan, and Vanessa decide to get intimate. But all we really see is a few kisses and the trio in bed after the fact. Nevertheless, parents freaked out, with the Parents Television Council even petitioning the CW to cut the episode. There was a lot of hype, but whether it was warranted is debatable. So much for the ultimate college experience. What? No, I have had the ultimate experience. Number 7. Effie – Skins Freddie McClaire was widely beloved on Skins. He was an all-around great guy, and his connection with Effie was truly special. You deserve better. She's alright, she's gonna sleep. As any avid viewer of the show knows, it didn't shy away from dealing with serious issues. But many people found Freddie's last moments unnecessarily horrific. It's perfectly understandable. I am something of a maverick. You never helped her at all. She's worse than she ever was now. In this season 4 episode, Effie is seeing Dr. Foster, who's supposed to help her with her mental health. But it soon becomes clear that he's obsessed with her, so she wants to cut ties with him. And Freddie delivers that message. You need to leave. She's my patient. Not anymore. You want someone else? 
You're done with her. But the psychiatrist then sets up a meeting with the latter character where he beats him to death with a baseball bat. It was an incredibly scary moment for fans who felt Freddy deserved better. Freddy. I'm sorry. Number six, Pilot, Euphoria. Euphoria constantly pushes boundaries, and they wanted us to know that from the jump. The drama addresses everything from addiction to intimacy in the pilot alone, and it's not afraid to delve into the darker side of things. How old are you? Uh, 22. Thanks. You live in town? Jules's storyline in the episode is one of the show's most graphic moments. The teen sets up a date with an older man through an app, and their sexual motel encounter is loaded and explicit, to put it mildly. Sure, he thinks she's 22, but still. I'm envious of your generation, you know. You guys don't care as much about the rules. You know, I think that's a good thing. To make matters even worse, the show later reveals that man to be Cal, the father of Jules' classmate Nate. Audiences were shocked and learned right away that Euphoria was not messing around. And then he, and then you looked at me. Yeah, because I was screaming inside again. Number five, with tired eyes, tired minds, tired souls, we slept. One Tree Hill. Sometimes difficult storylines are the most impactful, which is what happened with this episode of One Tree Hill. Jimmy Edwards gets a firearm and brings it to Tree Hill High, placing many of our main characters in danger. Jim, you can't do this. It's a little late for that mouth. I can't be here. Look, man, just let us go. I'm sorry I called you fat ass. It's a little late for that, too. The topic at hand was heavy, sensitive, and unsettling, and certainly affected people. As if that wasn't enough, Lucas's uncle and father figure Keith, also known as Dan Scott's brother, tries to connect with Jimmy toward the end of the episode. That voice in your head that's, that's saying there's no way out, it's wrong, Jimmy. Would you please... Please, just believe me, it gets better. It won't! Unfortunately, the teen takes his own life. Then Dan shows up and delivers the drama's most shocking twist, ending Keith's life and framing Jimmy for the act. It was a gutsy move for the show, and it ultimately paid off. But audiences definitely missed having Keith around. I just want him to come back. I just want him to come home. It's not fair. Number four, True Love, Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek had people talking from the jump. I'm sorry. God. I'll see you in school, Miss Jacobs. But even though Pacey making out with his teacher in the series premiere was pretty scandalous, this moment from the season three finale takes the cake. The episode obviously gave us Dawson's famous crying face, but it also made history, delivering what's widely been referred to as the first passionate or loving kiss between two men on primetime US television. In it, Jack heads to Boston to reconnect with his love interest, Ethan, and they kiss. I, I wanna show you. Okay, I wanna show you that I can and that I'm not afraid to... Oh, hell, this. The episode's director, James Whitmore Jr., has said that WB executives were a little nervous about airing the lip lock, but they decided to go for it despite any backlash they might receive, giving Jack and the audience the moment they deserved. Hey, look, I know there's people around, but who cares, right? I mean, that's the whole point. I finally have the courage to do this. Number three, accidents will happen. Degrassi, the next generation. Some subjects are deemed so contentious that the powers that be want to keep them hidden from us. Such is the case with this two-part episode of Degrassi The Next Generation. When Manny Santos learns that she's pregnant with Craig Manning's baby, she has to decide what to do. This is way too much. I could always go with you to talk to your parents. No, I couldn't tell them. While Craig is happy about the news, Manny isn't so sure. She eventually decides to terminate the pregnancy, drawing some criticism from her circle. But she's sure of her choice. I've thought about it. And I can't go away, I can't be pregnant, I can't be, I can't be a mom yet. What else can I do? Needless to say, it was a groundbreaking moment, especially at the time, but it didn't go over well with everyone. Indeed, the Canadian show's storyline was so controversial that the Accidents Will Happen episodes didn't air in the US until more than two years later. 
As long as you're sure of your decision, then I'll be okay. Number two, Seeing Red, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The relationship between Buffy and Spike and the latter's journey to find a soul were some of the most interesting parts of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but there were definitely intense bumps along the way. Most fans likely remember the moment in Seeing Red where Spike attempts to violate Buffy. I know you feel like I do. You don't have to hide it anymore. Spike, please stop this. Let yourself feel it. No. Thankfully, she's able to fight him off, but it was a really painful and disturbing moment for viewers. The actor who played Spike, James Marsters, felt the same way. I'm sorry. Not that it matters anymore, but I needed you to know that. While he said the storyline provided an important step forward in Spike's pursuit of a soul, he also described the experience as, quote, unbelievably hard. As entertaining as Buffy is to rewatch over and over again, this episode remains incredibly disconcerting. Anything to make these feelings stop. I just wanted it to stop. You should have let him kill me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Tape 7, Side A, 13 Reasons Why I need everything to stop. Possibly the most controversial teen show of all time, 13 Reasons Why had its fair share of champions and detractors. But even those who loved it couldn't deny that the season one finale went a little bit too far. Hey, Hannah, you can sit down. You don't need to be in a hurry. I need to get on with things, Mr. Porter. If things aren't going to change, then I just better get on with it, right? Hey, H Hannah. The show is about a teenage girl named Hannah who's taken her own life, leaving a series of tapes explaining her reasoning. There are plenty of rough moments throughout the first season. But the finale, in which Hannah is actually seen performing the act, prompted a ton of debate about what's appropriate to show on a TV series. In fact, roughly two years after the finale aired, Netflix edited the original scene to be much less horrific. You know, I, I think maybe now is where we stop this conversation. Okay. All right. Yeah. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.